Godier was part of a small group of avant-garde artists in London. There weren't many patrons, there weren't many collectors, and the kind of work they were making really outraged people. What's interesting about Godier is that he's self-taught. He never had any formal training, so when he arrived in London in 1911, he arrived determined to become an artist, and it was something that he was incredibly self-motivated about doing. He lived in absolute poverty. I think part of the fascination with him as an artist is this myth that surrounded his life. He met Sophie Breschka in a library in Paris, two lonely souls with no money but ambitions to change the world. She shared this life of terrible hardship to support him. It says quite a lot that Henri took her name as part of his artistic identity. Like any artist of that generation, Picasso is always a strong influence, especially Picasso's interest in African art. As an art that contained a kind of truth that they felt had gone missing in Western art through the kind of academic work of the 19th century. You can see Godier here establishing weight and form and planes with such economy. It's the sort of thing you only really get in sculptor's drawings. This is why these are two very significant works. You're getting a sculpture and a drawing in the same piece. The thing about Godier's career is actually it's incredibly short. Really, he doesn't get going till about 1912, and by 1914, he's left London to go and fight on the Western Front in World War I. He fought with incredible bravery. His colleagues would say almost with a disregard for his own safety. But unfortunately, like many people of his generation, he didn't really see out more than six months of active service. Mm -hmm.